Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube, continuing the discussion on lo-fi. I would be remiss if I did not discuss distortion. Now, distortion is an incredibly in-depth subject. I think to a certain degree we all know what it is, but of course there's a lot of technical understanding that can go underneath it, and there's many different types of distortion. I did a full-length for sale tutorial on distortion and saturation. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. Here, I want to focus more on a very specific technique when incorporating distortion into our productions, especially if we're doing something that is lo-fi but also needs to retain a certain degree of clarity. So I'm going to play a little bit of this record down here. I'm trying to make love, not a mince. I ain't trying to rush to the end. We never had much to begin with. Say I'm out of touch with my senses. I'm running again. Here you go, judging again. So what I've got going here is a very clean vocal at the moment. Let's say that for whatever reason, I wanted to give it a little bit of lo-fi character. I wanted to kind of crunch it up a little bit or something like that. I'm going to pull out one of my favorite distortions here, which is just the stock Pro Tools uh, DigiDesign Lo-Fi. It's really, really great sounding. The only thing I wish is that it had an output attenuation, but for that, I'm just including a little trim plugin so that we can kind of gain match. Now I'm going to play this again. Never had much to begin with. Say I'm out of touch with my senses. I'm running again. Here you go, judging again. Here I go, taking the fence. Now, for this record, I don't think it's the perfect distortion, but we're, we're using this as a demonstration piece mainly anyway to demonstrate a technique. The problem here with this distortion, aside from the fact that it's kind of pinching in the nose region, which I don't love, uh, but the problem is, is that it's running out a lot of the clarity of the vocal. It's starting to become really muddy. It's kind of darkened up, and that's because the high end is saturating at a different rate than the low end. So what if I want to have this same quality? What if I want to have a distortion that I love, but I want to maintain some clarity on it? Well, there's a little fun trick that we can do with minimal phase equalizers as long as they are symmetric. And it's a, it's, it's a very fun little property here. But basically, the property goes like this. As long as all things are the same, if we do a boost with one EQ and then do a cut with the same EQ, as long as it's symmetrical and all things are the same, same corner frequency, same degree of attenuation and boost, uh, same, same uh, slope, all of that kind of stuff, the sound will not actually change. It resets. So here on my first EQ, that is the very, very first thing in my signal chain, I'm doing an 18 dB bump, low shelf at 455 hertz, and I'm doing an 18 dB cut at uh, about 2K, basically, one uh, 1.915, right? On my last insert, I have an EQ that is doing the reverse. So it's an 18 dB cut at 455 hertz, and it's an 18 dB boost at 1915 hertz. So same thing, but going in the opposite direction. And if they are symmetric EQs, they will actually completely cancel out and return us back to exactly the same signal we started with. No phase change at all. The phase change in one direction is the exact opposite phase change that happens in the other. I'm trying to make love, not a mess. I ain't trying to rush to the end. We never had much to begin with. Say I'm out of touch with my senses. I'm trying to make love, not a mess. I ain't trying to rush to the end. We never had I'm trying to make love, not a mess. I ain't trying to rush to the end. Same exact thing. Now, at first glance, this might seem like it's not really that big of a deal, right? Well, we're just ending back where we started, so what's who cares, right? Well, it's because we can insert all sorts of effects in between. That's kind of interesting, right? Not necessarily even just distortion, but any kind of effect, really. But let's go back to our lo-fi here. All right now, I've got the lo-fi in between these two EQs, as well as my trim. All right, we're going to need that. Now, let's listen to how this sounds. I'm trying to make love, not a mess. I ain't trying to rush to the end. We never had much to begin with. Say I'm out of touch with my senses. I'm running again. Here you go, judging again. Here I go, taking the fence. 
we're still getting a ton of distortion from this, right? We can hear it crunching up and breaking up, but you notice that we're retaining really good clarity. Why? Because we're boosting the lows into the distortion and cutting the highs into the distortion, and then we're returning the signal after the fact. So the high end is not being distorted nearly as readily as the lows, and we're retaining a much better clarity. Let me bypass these EQs one more time just to remind you what it sounded like without them. I ain't trying to make love, not a miss. I ain't trying to rush to the end. We never had much to begin with. Say I'm out of touch with my senses. I ain't trying to make love, not a miss. I ain't trying to rush to the end. We never had much to begin with. Say I'm out of touch with my senses. I pretty cool, right? So this is something that we should consider if we get a distortion character that we really like, but for whatever reason, it's acting in a way that we don't necessarily love over the frequency spectrum. Maybe we want to retain some clarity of our signal, or maybe we want to do the opposite. Maybe we want to really like just absolutely break up the high end to get that distortion effect, but we want it to do it in a, almost kind of a cleaner way where we preserve the lows. That could be very valid as well. Okay, sounds terrible on that EQ, but let's say we wanted to do that on, you know, maybe Decapitator. It's a very interesting effect of creating this kind of distorted texture on the top, but still keeping the fundamental tones clean. That can be a really, really effective technique when we're incorporating some lo-fi stuff into some more hi-fi sounds, and can also work very well on drums rather than vocals. So things to consider. So I just wanted to show this little property of minimal phase because we can couple it with our distortion techniques and create some really cool results. All right, I'm gonna cut the video off here. If you dig this video, hit that like button if you wanna catch more more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification. Two tutorials that are for sale that I would like, well, that are paid that I would like to talk about. Uh, the first is mixing with distortion and mixing with saturation, which are bundled together currently. You can get a link for that in the description below. That's going to go into all sorts of distortion techniques at length. Uh, and then also I want to mention mixing with reverb, which is currently on sale because I just launched it earlier this month and that's going to continue to be on sale until February 15th. And there is a 20% off code for that reverb 20. So take advantage of that. Okay. Lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.